also for Afur Shalema for uh, Ruvain ben Bilha, Bezrat Hashem, Tzoch Shah, Kol Chalei Amo Yisrael, V'yimru, Amen. Okay, Baruch Hashem, we're getting together. It's a tremendous zechut to learn Sifri Rabbeinu. We're already holding a few weeks before Purim, the Chag HaKadosh, the Hanora, the Ayom, the Holy Day, the Halig Day of the, the whole year. Purim that a lot of people really don't really know. The, the potency of this day, the day that uh, Rizal said, Yom Kippurim, that even Yom Kippur doesn't come on the level of Purim. Tremendous lesson, tremendous insight. A day that Mamish, we realize that a Malik is nothing, there's no force of Yetzahar, it's all Akadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem is everywhere. We give ourselves totally to Akadosh Baruch Hu. And we come to a realization that even when Hashem is hidden, that even when we ourselves think that the world is occurring in its natural occurrence, it's really Akadosh Baruch Hu behind the whole mask and he's running the show. So uh, that, that deserves a l'chaim, right? L'chaim. So, um, so that in itself is a tremendous chus. And to get together to learn Sifri Rabbeinu, where the tzaddik himself was unveiling the whole mask to show you really ain od milvado, and Hashem is the force behind all of creation, and all the ups and downs that we have is really for a, tr- for a, for a tachlit, a true tachlit. So that itself is also bechinat purim. To realize that it's Megillat Esther is revealing the hiddenness. Esther means hidden. It's revealing, it's understanding that really there's something behind the picture. That's really the tzaddik's whole mission. And we're going to learn a little bit tonight about the tzaddik a little bit because it's a big problem, unfortunately, in our times that people, you know, when you use the term tzaddik, for, you know, a lot of people, they, they turn off the, the, the motor. Like they think, like, you know, this sounds already like hocus pocus and weird. You know, chas v'sholem sounds like Christianity a little bit. Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like we have to understand that uh, that there's a role of, of the tzaddik in Judaism. You know, it's all over the chumash. Like everything with regarding Moshe Rabbeinu. Whenever we wanted to connect to Kadosh Baruch Hu, we went through Moshe. You know, he was the conduit. He was the, he was the person that linked us in, like a pipe, a channel. And, and Kadosh Baruch Hu, when he wanted to give us messages, it went via the tzaddik also. When we wanted to make the mishkan, right? You can mamish have the most, you know, amazing, you know, piece of gold and fabrics and whatever you want to donate to the Mishkan. If it didn't go to Moshe Rabbeinu, it wouldn't be counted as part of the Mishkan. It had to go through Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu had to receive it, had to see it, and then it could be placed in. So too right now, our spirituality, everything really is connected via the tzaddik. That's why a lot of people, when they daven, they say, Hashem, you should connect me to all the true tzaddikim. It's called the uh, Hareni Makasha, a certain tefillah, especially breast livers say, because it's a very special thing to be conscious of such a thing. So let's learn. It's on page Mem Hay in Meshiva Nefesh, Daf Tet Vav. Kol Echad Mi Yisrael, Shirotzel Achus Al Nafsho, any individual, any Jew, any Yid that really wants to have compassion upon himself, and that desires to come out of Mamish his filth, the filth that somebody has fallen into. And someone that wants to come close to the true tzaddikim. And his kavana is in truth. He's sincere. We're not talking about someone that wants to play games. We're talking about someone that really wants to be come to close to Kadosh Baruch Hu. He doesn't have ulterior motives. He doesn't say, oh, you know, Shem, want to come close? You hook me up with, with this. No. He wants to come genuinely. He wants to do tshuva. L'Hashem Yisbarach, L'Shub L'Hashem Yisbarach. Someone that really wants to come close, he has to know one thing. This is a major idea that we have to understand. Tzarech Leida, one has to know, Shebehechreach, Shiyavru Alav, Kama Vakama Meshabrim. He has to go through many, many barriers. Vegale Hayam, waves of the ocean, Ubechinos, Venisyonos, Vetsirufim, different tests, different scenarios. He has to go through a lot. A Yid has to go through a lot if he really, really desires to come close to the Ebishta. And if he doesn't give up his position, he doesn't give up his post, he still stands his post, even though all the difficulties he goes through. For sure he will merit mamish, an ending that's really good, that's really beautiful for eternity. Right? 
we just have to be able to hold strong. We have to know that. The main thing that the Yetzirah wants to do to us is just throw us off in the moment. Things are going tough, you know, like the going gets tough. The tough gets going, right? We're supposed to really, we're supposed to rev up and be like, no, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to get over this. Gamze Yavor, it's going to pass. But what happens? The Yetzirah wants to get a person to become angry, become frustrated. You know, what's happening? Why is this happening to me? A person starts bugging out, right? Panicking, right? He starts, you know, chasrashom, you know, yelling, whatever it could be, you know? Like, unfortunately, the society is so controlled by their instincts, it's ridiculous, mamish. You could just like, you know, slightly go in front of another car. The guy's like fuming. He wants to like, he wants to blow you up. You know what I mean? His mom is like, you know, I saw in a, it was in Bar Park. Some guy, some chassid was pulling out of his driveway. He was just pulling out, no, actually out of Babov. He was pulling out, some chassid was pulling out, you know. And he got in front of the car that was going a little bit. The guy, you know, was going a little fast. And then he had, the car had to stop for this guy that's coming out of the driveway. Like, okay, it's like, okay, fine, big deal, whatever, let it go. Guy flipped out. Some, some, you know, these bunch of like young guys, you know, with with with, with caps like sideways. You know, no offense. And they were like, you know, the, you know, the music, the beats are pumping, and the smoke coming out of the car. They get like, what the, what the f? What? Like froth coming out of them, out like bogging out. This guy's like losing his mind. Like he's totally losing his mind. And the chus is like sitting there by the window, just like staring at this guy. Like, what the heck is wrong with this guy? You know what I mean? Like, what? It, and a few see them also stop just to make sure like nothing physical is gonna happen. Like, it could be just a little fluff, you know, or froth. But, uh, but uh, whatever, and then whatever. At the end, he, after all the vulgarity came out, then, you know, he got in the car and just drove off, you know. But, like, what the heck? It's ridiculous. We're all, everything in America, instant. Like, I got to get this, I got to get, the, you know. It's got to be at the click of a button, you know. It's too slow. The computer's too slow. It takes, like, four seconds, you know. Like, you know, it's got to be, you know, two and a half, you know. Like, what's going on with us? And that happens to us, too. You know, if we're driving around, you know, you have to realize, you, you know, you come home into the house, take a second before you go through that door. Realize you're not driving anymore. You know what I mean? If your kid gets in the way, your wife doesn't bring you the dinner as quick enough, you know, you know, don't bug out. Don't start honking the horn like, hey, you know, what's going on? You know, no. You have to realize, you know, things take, you know, things, there's a procedure, you know, that, uh, like uh, HaKadosh Baruch who's putting us through scenarios and he wants to see how we react. These scenarios is, is just HaKadosh Baruch Hu making the scene, right? It's like a cartoon character, and he's just like filling in like, you know, the different obstacle courses that we're going through. But it's really Ein Od Milvado. It's all HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Somebody that wants to come close to Hashem has to be able to maintain this inner, this inner knowledge that, uh, that it's really just Hashem, and I have to work on my patience. And this is a life thing. A person shouldn't get discouraged if he falls, chas v'shalom. If he gets angry or something like that, he shouldn't, chas, the, then the Yetzirah comes to try to get a person to be depressed. But at least this idea, not that I'm not giving up my post, I'm going to try, I'm going to make my effort not to let this world phase me. I'm not going to do it, right? And if a person does that, he's stubborn, he will, be, he will have the merit to have a, to have a beautiful end. So how does all this strength come from? If I need this chiyus, like it's hard. It's very hard, the difficulties that he has to go through. So he says you should know one thing. He says we can't do it on our own. We get this koach somewhere. We mamish get this koach, every single one of us, we get this koach, ulechol ze mekablin koach, rak mehatzadik ha'emes. We all, each and every single person in this room, we receive this koach from the true tzadik. The chinas Moshe. The tzadik like that is the aspect of Moshe. Shehu ose kama tachbulos. Moshe Rabbeinu, the tzaddik, Bechinas Moshe, is sitting up there and he makes, in, in tremendous wisdom, he, 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 can, he can play out scenarios that you have to go through, right? He makes it in a way that all these people, like for example, you know, uh, Chaim Yankel that lives there, or Yosef that lives there, like all these neshamas that are scattered around Olam Haza, he sees from Shemayim. You know, in another Torah in the Kutumaran, the Rebbe says that all of Nishmas Yisrael is compared to like a garden. We're all growing in this garden. Right? There's different types of plants, there's different types of trees. And he says that he says that in this garden there's a gardener. 
And this gardener, his job is to see where each plant has to be placed, next to which plants, next to which trees, and he has to make sure that each tree and each plant has enough water and is growing properly. And it says, it says in Likut Zimran that this gardener is the tzaddik. Right? The garden is the Nishmas of Am Yisrael, and the Kodesh Baruch Hu has placed a gardener to make sure that the, that the Nishamas, that the, that the plants are doing okay. So this, this gardener, it's his job that he, in Shemayim, he, he, he makes it in a way that a nisham, that how this Nishama should go about in Olam Hazad, but what can be the hints and the road signs that he can see, that he can hold on to, to come close to Kodesh Baruch Hu. So a lot of times a person sees something like an awakening, it's because the tzaddik in Shemayim has thrown something down. He's thrown like an ability, like a, like a, you know, like a lifesaver. You know, he throws something that you can be able to hold on to. You know, specifically, so many people told me that Mamish, when they were in such pits in their lives, in the middle of nowhere, they found something to hold on to. It was an amazing thing. And a lot of times that thing gave them the chiyas to come back so much higher. And, and it was due to that thing, that chiyas, when they were on such a low level that they reached, they were able to come out of that mess. And we, ha- we can't fool ourselves. This is not just stam. There's, 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 there's neshamas, there's big tzaddikim that, that, that make the connections in the heavens that this should come about. Shezeh bechinas, that this is what it says. Shezeh bechinas, ma shehatzadik mevatel et atzmo. We should know that there's a lot of things that's transmitted from the tzaddik. And this is something that's mamish in mainstream Judaism. It's not something, a wacky idea, right? Or zarua le tzaddik uli yishrei lev simcha. Right, like it says in, in, it says in the Pasuk. Rav Shimon Bar Yechai said that I myself can bring the whole, I have the schut to bring the whole world to the side of merit. Rav Shimon Bar Yechai, you know? That, that there's such an ability that the tzaddikah emes can find, Rabbi Nachman is, explains, through finding the good in Am Yisrael, through finding the good in every single yid, he can connect to that person and bring him back to tshuva. What would happen? A person would go to, let's say, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak, the Kedushas Levi. You'd walk in the room, right? So you're thinking, oh, I'm such a sinner, I'm such a this, that, I'm so embarrassed. So you come in front of the tzaddik and you start confessing. And the tzaddik looks at you, and what does he do? He looks, he doesn't look specifically at all these things, the sins that you're telling him, he looks beyond that and he sees the good of your neshama and he brings that out and he says, no, that you're taka good, you're amazing. And you have to realize that you're amazing. And when he, when he does that to you, when he's looking at, at you in that light, you actually come to the side of tshuva. You feel, you feel great. You feel good about yourself. You feel like you have hope. What did he do? He tapped into your neshama by finding the good that you have. So the tzaddikim, even though the Gemara says, even they may have passed away, it's not like they're dead. It's a Gemara. The Gemara says that they're very much alive. If not, if not more so, their power is even doubled because they're not limited by a physical body anymore. It's an amazing thing. It's tremendous chus. Rabbi Nachman himself said, what are you guys worried about? I'm going before you. I'm going to pave the path. You know? It's a tremendous chus when someone connects to a tzaddik. When someone goes to the kever of a tzaddik, the Baal Shem Tov says, you should know that the kever of a tzaddik is Kedushas Eretz Yisrael Mamash. Mamash. Like, you want to go to Eretz Yisrael? You want to feel Eretz Yisrael? Go. go. Lubavitch Rebbe is buried very near here. It's amazing chus. It's unbelievable. You go there, you're in Eretz Yisrael. It's an unbelievable thing. The, the Arizal says that there's, you know, the nefesh, ruach, neshama, the parts of the soul, Right? People think, oh, when you die, it goes to the heavens. He says, no, you should know by tzaddikim, the higher parts of the neshama, the neshama goes to the heavens. But he says, the ruach and the nefesh stay right there. He says, the ruach is manifest in the walls of the tzion, where the tzaddik's buried. Right? And the neshama, you know, a lot of people, like the stories, like when they moved the Vilna Gon's kever, they saw that the body was, was completely intact, you know, after who knows how many years. And the, 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 the skin was moist from the mikveh, they say. It's a tremendous thing, like unbelievable, like the, because, because the tzaddikim have, there's a presence right there, it doesn't leave. There's a certain, you know, one time it happened that um, Rabbi Nachman's daughter was looking out the window. If you don't remember the story, like she, she was looking out the window and, and her, their, their apartment was overlooking a cemetery. So somebody came to the kever of like um, of a relative and was like, you know, talking and, crying and whatever, you're saying all these things. 
So then Rabbi Nachman came to the window, and the daughter said, isn't that sad that, that she's talking and talking, but there's no one there to hear her? So then Rabbi Nachman said a very, very interesting line. He said that, he says, you're right. That's why when someone goes to the kever of a relative, they should go to the, the, neighbor, the neighboring kvarim and, and, and mention that they should, in, the, in Shemaim, that they should summon the soul of this individual that you're going to see. You should go to the other kvarim around and say to, to summon that soul down. He says, but, however, when you go to the kever of a tzaddik, there's no need to do that. Because it's tzaddik, going from this world to the next, is like going through one door to the next, one room to the next. And he said, for example, if I stand on one side of the door and you speak, will I not hear you? Right? Made it very clear, right, that, that there is, it's not, it's not just like, you know, fairy tales. It's mamish be'emes, the tzaddik's there. You know what I mean? Chaparai needs a rebbe. He can help. Be mavarech me. Help me. Pull me out of Gehenim. Do whatever you have to do. And by the way, the tzaddikim say, not only Gehenim from the next world. When the rebbe said, I'll pull you out of Gehenim in this world. Get me out of the darkness. Mamish. It's a haftacha. We have to take advantage of that. It's tremendous merit. Right? So we have to know. So, and also there's other things that the tzaddik does, especially we see when Rabbi Nachman was alive. There were certain things he did that really fits into what we're going to see right now. Check this out. It says over here that Shezeh um, right, the second line from the top, towards the end of the line, Shezeh Bechinat, ma shahatzadik mevatel et atzmo lefa'amim ma'asagoto umidvekuso. Sometimes the tzadik, he's mevatel himself from his level of, of dvekus to Hashem. He starts acting very simple, you know? Like especially the, the rabbi on the way to, to Eretz Yisrael, certain moments, you know, the gabayim that were with him, they like, what's going on? He was like, you know, playing with kids in the streets. Like it was like strange activity was happening. They couldn't explain, right? Umidvekuso bechade. So what is he doing? Tzadik's mavatel himself. He's acting so simple. Why does the tzadik do that? It says over here, bechade. Listen to this. Bechade lachayot. He says, when the tzaddik's doing that, you should know, just like we saw Moshe Rabbeinu as a conduit for all Nishmas Am Yisrael, so the tzaddik sees that there's souls of the Jewish people that are also poshet, that they're not dovik to Torah. So how are they going to get chiyas? Because if Torah is kihem chayenu, all our chiyas come from Torah, so what about the Jews that aren't connected to Torah? What's going to be for them? How are we going to help them? Right? Remember, the tzaddik cares about everyone like it's his son. It doesn't matter if he's being shomer Torah mitzvahs. Right? So, so what does he do? So the tzaddik himself acts simple, like without Torah, so he could transmit light and chiyas to those neshamas that are lost. It's amazing. Right? Right? V'chein... Also, people that are chachamim when they're not learning, know what's going to be with them. How do they get their chiyas? So that's why the tzaddik is mavatel himself. They are needed to be mavatel themselves. Sometimes. Ki ha'avodat tzarich aliyot b'chinat rotsa v'shov. That avodat Hashem is is running and returning. It's up and down. Ayl v'nafik. It's all the ups and downs that we go through, that the tzaddik himself goes through. That every individual has to go through these things. Remember, somebody came to Hillel and Shammai and said, teach me the whole Torah standing on one foot. He wanted only aliyahs. Shammai said, get the heck out of here. It's not Judaism. What do you mean? You don't want to help anyone. You just care about yourself. You just want aliyahs. Standing on one foot, one direction going the right way. No, it doesn't go like that. He took one of the pillars of the house, so it says, one of the Amud Abayas, and he chased him out of the base Medrash. This is the Shammai, you know. So, so, so Rabbi Yaakov Meir Shachta says, one of the pillars of the house, because it's one of the foundations of the world that you have to go through ups and downs. A Yid has to go through good times and bad times. That's the reality. Embrace it. It's a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Why? Because when you go through a difficult time, you have the opportunity now to save so many souls that are going through hard times also. 
It could be future, God forbid, future descendants of yourselves. You know, like, like it could be a neshama in some other time zone, in some other place in the world, that because you held strong and you had amuna, you're mechazikim also. It's part of this world. And olam haba, fine. Olam haba is great. Sit back, relax, enjoy. You know? This world, it's a it's, 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 it's place to move, to accomplish. We can't waste time here. It's I'm sh- fleeting. We're never going to have this moment ever in history again. This moment right now, we're never going to have it. Baruch Hashem, we were to get together to learn Sfarim from a tzaddik. We're never going to have it again. Time's flying. You know, how many people are, you know, how the Yetzar tries to wheel in time. Sit there, mamish, you know, Facebook for four hours. Like, psh, like it's nothing. Like, phew, what's going on? Like, everyone's busy right now. You're busy with what? You're busy with utter shtus. Nothing, mamish. Like, people come to see each other, to hang out. They take out their smartphones, and they sit playing with their smartphones. You came to engage, to talk to someone. What the heck are you doing? Parents aren't talking to their kids. Husbands and wives aren't communicating. They're all texting. It's, it's, what's happening to us? The Yetzirah is just trying to just get your heart. Just, just, you have a heart of stone. You're not alive. You're just, you know, just be in the machines. Don't be in reality. No. Breslov tells you, stop. Stop. Turn off your cell phone. You want what's the most precious thing? Spend 15 minutes with your creator. Go into a room, private, close the door, and just talk. You know, sit there, you know, make a clear table, put a candle, chill with Abba, sing. It's the most precious thing. It's simple, but it's so gewaldig. Rabbi Nachman says it's the highest thing in the world. It's, it, it's Mila of Isbodidus. It's Gavoa min hakol. It's higher than all of them. So you can ask all these Lamda Shashilas, oh, you know, Talmud Torah, you know. But I'm saying there's a way to work it out. Don't worry. You know, you know. I'm saying, yeah, there is. We, you know. But, but, but it's, it's the most gewaldig thing. Who can't do that? You can't do that? Light up a candle and talk to your father. It's the most gavaldic thing in the world. It's so rewarding. And he says, you have no idea where your words go. You could give, you could say one word, Abba. You don't know. You just threw in Shemayim an Aleph, a Bez, and an Aleph. These are vessels, he says, in the Kutum Moran. He says, they became vessels. You just created a vessel called Abba. There's an Aleph, there's a Bez, and another Aleph. And you bring down Hashem's Hashkacha into your life. You know, some Rosh Hashiva was sitting by Reb Nuss and he's like, you know, I have a Talmud that he could say a, a thousand blot Gemara, you know, a thousand pages of Gemara, one after another, without interruption. And then Reb Nuss says, I have a Talmud that could say the word Rabbi Shalom a thousand times, one after another, without interruption. Wow. You know, like that's a shvach. You know, like, I, I heard that I fell off my chair. I was like, that's going to so go about me. You know, the guy's like, you hear? And Reb Nuss like, you hear? Reb Nassim, no, Reb Nassim. Oh, right. They're all They're all Heilig. Um, but yeah, that's the Indian. Who can do Sarah Bonashalalam? It's such a beautiful thing. The simple of Vodas is so holy, it's so gewaldig, and it's so necessary, especially in our times. I feel bad, you know. I mean, I don't know what happened, but like how they created in Yeshiva is like, you know, that like, you know, you go, you daven, you have breakfast, and then like the rest of the day, Gemara. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know, like, like 12 hours, just come out. Like, you know, like, all right, what about the other things in Judaism? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's other aspects, you know, meditate, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like other things, like learn Tanakh, like what about, you know, halach or exercise, or, you know, dance. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like by Rav Arush's minion there, it's so the moms, like after weekday chakras, like they just bust out with a dance. Because it's great to be a Jew. We just did like a few mitzvahs, midah raisa, you know, shouldn't we celebrate? Like, isn't it awesome? Like, Judaism's awesome. Like, you should feel like it's awesome. If you don't feel like it's awesome, something's wrong. We can't be robots. If we're going in day and day out, we're just going to shul, like, you know, dominating, it's feeling okay, you know. Like, what's going on? You know, we gotta, you know, I gotta feel it. It's gotta be joyous, you know. I'm saying, you know, everyone's gonna think, like, you're crazy, you know, walk in shul the next day. You're gonna say, like, oh, let's dance, you know, you're like, get, out, get the heck out of here. You know, you gotta find a, maybe you gotta find a breast of minion. But, um, <laughs> right? But, but what are we going to do? We have to have Judaism with a heart. And we want new, we all want kids that are also feeling Yiddishkeit, that they're passionate, that they want to be jumping up and down. Sorry, Mrs. They, if they don't see us jumping up and down, they're not going to be jumping up and down. Why the heck are they going to be jumping up and down? You're on your cell phone the whole day. So I want to be on a cell phone. So get me a cell phone. They're going to be nagging you when are you going to get me an iPhone because you're always on your iPhone. They want to be like you. However you make yourself, that's the way your kids are going to be. I guarantee you. 
You want to be a guy that loves to learn? You want to be a guy that like mamish sings on Shabbos till at the point that he's just like bugging out and dancing? Your kids are going to be bugging out and dancing. You'll see. They're going to be like, Shabbos, Gaidish. You know, it's going to be Gavaldic. You think you can't do it? You could do that. You could do that mamish in the schmutz that we exist these days. Because if there's a fire within, it could mamish burn out all the, all the klipas, all the impurities of the world. You know? It's, 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 you know, it's, you know, Re'iti b'nei aliyah v'hem mu'atim. I saw that there are b'nei aliyah in the world, but there are few. Not so many. It's not so common. We're all, we've all been diseased, but like we, we can, we can get out of it. Through, when you learn the teachings of Rebbeinu, it's like, there's no other way out. Your heart has to pump. He says that I want to change your lave evan into lave baser. That's what Breslov is about, right? Breslov is lave baser. That to, to remove the heart of stone, like it says in Navi, and to replace you with a heart of flesh, that you should feel its heart mitzvahs and be excited about it. And that's precious and it's dear to you. That's what the tzaddik is constantly occupied with in order to lift us up. Vezeh bechinat, and you should know, so we were saying, just like the tzaddik has to act simple in order to raise the souls that have fallen, he says, you should know, Vezeh bechinat hafsokot, we see that between parshas there's a gap. He says, these gaps, shebein parsha la parsha, shebetora, shezeh bechinat habitul, this is the bitl. Shemavatil atzma at tzaddik, that the tzaddik would be mavatil himself. It's not just straight Torah, there's a white space. That's what that white space symbolizes. Bechol pam, umafsik atzma ma'avadosu, bechdei lachayosu, lachazik, es kol bechinas abatelim, in order to give strength and vitality to all the people that are batil in the world. Mizem marubaz bedivar abatenu zal. This is marubaz in the words of Chazal. As Rashi brings down, me hayu hafsakot mishamshot. What what is the function of these empty spaces in the Torah? Litain revach la Moshe. In order to give Moshe more of an expansion, more of a more of a break, so to speak, more t- a, a chance to relax. V'kal v'chomer lehedyot halamid min hedyot. And kal v'chomer for for people like us, the simple people that are learning from simple people. How much more so? Ki ikar koach hahedyot lechazik et atzma be'et bitulam because you should know it's the function of us simple people that what? That when's the main time that we need chizuk? The main time that we need chizuk is when we're bottled from Torah and mitzvahs. Now when we're coming to Steig. Yeah, when we're coming all to learn together this is Gavadik, this is Gan Eden, this is beautiful. But what about when we're not together? What about when we're alone and we don't have Torah and mitzvahs in our lives? That's when we need chizuk, right? Be'etz bitulam ve'yeridatam, and when we fall, chas v'shalom, not to lose hope and to bounce back and to start again. Hurak al yidei havsokot. That comes from these interruptions. That's the white spaces in the Torah when you're not holding, when you've fallen off the wagon. You're like Hashem, where am I? The chius, Moshe Benu needs those white spaces because he gives us chius through, through those white spaces. It's not always letters of Torah. Sometimes it's you're out, but you're still connected to the tzaddik because the tzaddik specifically puts himself low in order to connect to us. And through this, that a yid is mechazik himself, through no matter what he goes through, al yedeze mevarin bechinas eight sadas tovara. This is the way we could fix the sin of Adam Harishon. This is the way we could repair the 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 breaking that took at the beginning of time. Shemisham kol anisyono chila Adam. It's from the sin of the eight sadas tovara that all the tests that we go through, all the confusion that we have, is from that sin. But this is how we fix it: from being strong in the tough times. And through this, we're zochet to tikkun adas to really rectify our minds properly. And memela, we we fix all the higher aspects of of the intellectual faculty, the svirot, the higher svirot, for whoever knows what that means. And then we're zochet to amuna to really believe that a kaddish baruch is the one that created the world. Everything else is sheker. And not only that, but what's going to be when Mashiach comes? So Gavaldiga Hasag is that one could reach just from this Devekis in the Tzadik and having a Muna that when the times are rough, then I'm going to hold strong. That was one shtickle. Let's do another shtickle, Tet Zion. 
Okay. Kemosha Shem Yisbarach Miniach Miniach Es Miniach Kol Hal Yonim Umalachim Srafim Verotze Daike Bavodas Bnei Odam Agashmiim Kain Kol Mashema Drega Nemucha Pachuta Biyoter Keshem Itorim Misham Beize Hitorut Kol Shu Nasem Izesha Shua Nifla Lamala. Okay. So Reb Nassim over here says that just like we see a Kodesh Baruch Hu, you should know he 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 puts he puts aside he he he. He looks beyond all the srafim, all the malachim, all the tremendous things that's happening in the heavens, and he specifically wants our avoda. What a Kodesh Baruch Hu desires the most, more than anything in the higher realms, is the avoda of physical people like us. Mamish, me and you. Kain kol ma So so too, if, if we know that that's true. By the way, the Svarim say that that's true, right? Like, like it says that it says that in Pasuk, Tenu oz lokim, give strength to your Creator. So who, who am I to give strength to Hashem? Give Yachol. What does that mean, right? So the Svarim say that when that uh, the Baal Shem Tov says that a person, a Jew, is created as a microcosm of all of the worlds, all of the universe, and everything, all of creation. There's an element of all of the worlds, all of the higher worlds within man. So in, in, in clothed within me is, an, is a part of all of the olamot. So therefore when I'm machazik myself and I'm serving Hashem, even though that I'm in the lowest rung, right, like the Balatani explains this four worlds, so even though I'm in the world of the physical world of Asiya, so therefore, but I'm giving chius and vitality to all the higher worlds because I'm connected to them. So even the malachim, even the, even the supernal angels, they receive strength from me, from a human being, doing avoda, right? Like it says, the Piazetsa Rebbe said, he said you should know that the angels in the heavens are jealous of, of, of human beings. They see Jews, he's like, who is this guy? You know, this like, you know, this little pisher, you know? He's like, he's just sitting and learning, and what's happening? And fire is coming out of his mouth, and he's sustaining all of the heavens. How can it be? How come we can't do that? You know what I mean? Well, we're not great and big. It's an amazing thing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us the ability. When he gave the Torah to Am Yisrael, it was like the angels are like, no, don't. What's the big deal? What's the problem? Just give them the Torah. Let them have another copy of the book. There's plenty to go around. It's a big deal. Because when he gave that, he gave them the mafteach, the key, that now you are the ones that are in charge. You're in charge. We're in charge. We're in, we're in darkness. We're in charge? Yeah. If you can fight through the darkness and have amuna and serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu, and, and everything you do has the power through your Torah and mitzvahs to give chiyas to, to all of creation. Right? It's an amazing schus. Even the malachim themselves, they depend on us. It's an unbelievable thing. You know, you know when, when, when it says the angels came to visit Avram, you know, like each one came for a mission, right? Uh, you want know, to save Lot and to just destroy Sodom and to give um, give Avram the Besora, right? So, so the so the, the Reb Reb Zusha says they also came, like on a side note, they wanted to see like what it is, what it is Avram does when he eats. <laughs> Why? Because in the Sefer Chesidus it explains when you eat and you have kavana, you make a bracha on something. And you have a little kavana, the, the sparks, in, inside everything there's sparks of godliness. Those sparks now rise up to the heavens. There's a tremendous kavod shemayim that goes into the heavens when you make a bracha on something and have even a slight kavana, the Balatani says, just shamnu, help me serve you better. You know, that the, that, let this give me energy to serve you. You know, like just a nice thought, you know, when you sip your drink, right? So, so, so he says, you should know, those sparks are flying to the heavens and the angels are like, whoa, whoa. Like, that's so cool. Like, how do they do that? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? So what they do, so these angels came, and then Avram's like, would you guys like to eat? And then they look at each other like, yeah, we want to eat. You know? <laughs> like, what do you guys do? <laughs> you know, they wanted to watch, to see, like, and they're making believe. They never ate. What the heck is food, you know? Like, yo, we wash, and they're like, okay, let's, let's wash, you know? And he's like, hamotzi, you know, like, it's amazing, you know? It says that someone that eats Erev Yom Kippur. It says in the Gemara, it's a Gemara. Someone that eats Erev Yom Kippur, it's as if he's fasted for two days. What? Second, yeah. Yeah, someone that, someone that partakes in the Sudam of Seket, it's as if he fasted for two days. What does that mean? You know? So that means he fasted today, 
and Yom Kippur. That's what two days means, the Kedusha Slevi says. So what does that mean? Right? It doesn't make sense. Fasting on Yom Kippur is as if you fasted one day. Fat eating every Yom Kippur is as if you fasted that day and the next day. Why? Because it's saying, what a Yom Kippur, the Kedusha Slevi says, that the highest madriga we reach, we're Dome Lamalachim. We reach the madriga of angels. But an angel can't eat, an angel can't raise the sparks of food. Only we can. So someone that eats Erev Yom Kippur, why Erev Yom Kippur? Because Erev Yom Kippur, every bite you take is a mitzvah. It's an unbelievable mitzvah, right? It's all begeder mitzvah. So when, when all of Am Yisrael are eating, there's all these sparks that are flying into the heavens. Erev Yom Kippur, imagine if you're an angel, it's like, it's like, it's like Grand Central Station. It's like whoosh, sparks everywhere, like what's going on? Yeah, it's called Yidin. <laughs> And they have the ability that you don't have, my friend. I'm sorry. They can lift sparks because we're in the physical realm. We can uplift. And that's the Indian of Purim. Ad yada, you know? I don't know. The real tachlis of, of Das is to know that I don't know. To know that a Kodesh Baruch has given me this opportunity. And if I just hold on to him, there's unbelievable elevations that are taking place. I don't have to know the details. You know, some people try to map it out. You know, learn Kisri Arizal, this gate, this shar, this name. Okay, that's great if you could handle that. But if you don't, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. You know, Rabbi Nachman says you should know when you pray, just pray simple. You don't need to have all these names and charts and Yudke Vavkes and Rachel Leah and all these things going on. I mean, just be simple. Just daven simple. Daven your, just like a child in front of his father. Just think about the words. Think about that you're yearning in front of Hashem. That's the most precious thing. He says you accomplish so much more. You know what I mean? It's just from being a simple Jew, just if we go about with Shulchan Arach and we live our lives like a kosher Jew, we have no idea what we're doing. It's an unbelievable schuss. So he says over here, specifically from us, because we're on the lowest level, right? On page Mem Zayin at the top, Upechusa beyotzer keshemit orim misham be'ezeh hitorut kol shehu nasim izeh when a Jew that's on the lowest of all levels when he just wakes up a little bit and he gets himself to do something in Avodah Hashem, whatever it may be, Nasim Izeh, you should know from that, creates Shashuim Nifloim Lamala. You have now created tremendous, tremendous pleasure in the heavens. How much delight, Nachas, you give to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lamala. Bebechinas Kad Ati Yitzro. When Yitzro came close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kedain, it says in the Halak Azoira Kadash, Kedain is Talak Vis Yakir Shema the Kuchibrihu. When Yisro came close to Hashem, when he joined Am Yisrael, Hashem's name was exalted on all the realms. That's an unbelievable thing. Like what's this, what's the Zohar telling me? You know what I mean? And we have to think for ourselves, how come the Parsha of Kabbalah Satorah is named Yisro? You know what I'm saying? There's not one Parsha <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't get his name in the Torah. You know, there's no, we don't have a parsha called Moshe. You'd figure maybe the parsha that we receive the Torah should be called Moshe. No, he's done so much for us, you know. Yisro. Who was Yisro? It's like some, you know, excuse my language, but he was some, some I mean, some low life. You know what I'm saying? His whole life, he's running around every Avodah Zara, every Meshagas in the world, every Avodah Zara, every idol. Like, can you imagine? There was, there was wacky stuff in the world back then. They used to take babies, like throw them in fire, like, you know, like bow down to idols. It was, it was insane. He became the chief. He was like the head of every Mishigas in the world. You know, if you thought some guy was like a complete loony, he'd be like, Yisro. You know what I'm saying? So we named him that title for Kabbalah Satorah? The Parsh of Kabbalah Satorah? Like, come on. So that's the whole Vort. What did Kosh Baruch do this for? To show us the message that, that Dafka, I want the people that are far. When the people that are furthest from me, that they're in their darkness, when he comes close, oh, I feel Gavaldic. I know Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu's in my palace. I know, you know, he's Gavaldic. But Yisro, psh. So we have to know. We have to get a chizuk from, from ourselves. We think, oh, I'm far from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You're far? Yes, yeah, so specifically you can give so much nachas to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We know the Rebbe's in, you know, Williamsburg is serving Hashem. But you... That it's hard for you to get up for shachris. You, that like, mamish, you know, your yetzar is pounding on your head, your mom belayla. When you do a mitzvah, when you do five minutes of svaris, oh, that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is waiting for. And he gives that the title of Kabbalah Satorah. That, it's Yisro, it's the Baal Tshuva. 
It's not the tzaddik. It's about tshuva. We have to know. It's, a, it's, it's all messages for us. Al Kain. Therefore, Al Yidei since we know that we have tremendous tzaddikim, that they uplift souls that have fallen, like we learned before, there's a tremendous unification that takes place now. This is a, it's a Kabbalistic thing, it has to do with the, the, the bite of the snake, so to speak. Besod Kriyas Yamsuf, and it's related to the Indian of in Alpi Kabbalah about what, what was taking place in Kriyas Yamsuf, which he's going to explain in a little bit. The Indian is that the Tzadik shines on these souls that even are the most furthest away, when they awaken themselves to come close, he shines a type of light that comes from the highest of all levels. Shezebechinas ma. It's the aspect of ma. Mem he. Shekatuv sham, as it says in the Torah over there, ma titzak elai. But why are you calling out to me? Right? The, the, the Indian of ma is, is a very deep Indian. It's a, it's a light of a Kodesh Baruch Hu that's called mem he. And it says, ba'atika talya milta. Why are you calling out, out to me? Because this depends on atika. Atika, alpi kabbalah, is symbolizing a very, very high light. Light of Kesser, right? Kimachma shehem cholei nefesh you should know because since that those people are so fallen, they've fallen in such darkness, upegumim, they've blemished so much. This is speaking for all the nefashos of bezman azeh. Al Cain, therefore, ef shar lo shiam that he that the Kodesh Baruch says, I can't save them unless. Unless I send the tzaddik that is tremendously great, the greatest of all tzaddikim, that he can awaken them. He can give them hope. He can sink to their level and say, you know what? That he draws from the highest of levels. He draws Torah from the level of Atik. So we have a tzaddik, you know, he's t- he, like the, the, the Rebbe said, that you should know, he says, I know the sod of where all the tzaddikim draw their Torah from. He said, or Baruch Medjubuz, he draws from a certain sphera, and he said, he said, another one of the Rebbe's that he draws from a certain sphera, but then he said, but he says, I'm not interested in that, to draw Torah from those places. That he said, I, I am interested to draw from Atika Sitima Ila, that, I, that I'm interested to draw Torah from the highest level, from the highest spheres, a person has to know, you know, the chidush of Lakut Maran and the, the Sifri Breslov is that, you know, the whole procedure of Kabbalah took many different shapes and forms. You know, with Rav Shimon Bar Yechai, with the revelation of the Zohar, and then later with Kisvi Arizal, it took a certain style. You know, when the Kisvi Arizal came around, you know, we saw, you know, every sin is so severe, how many fasts a person has to take for even the slightest blemish he does, and how he rectifies, it was a whole procedure. It wasn't so simple. And the times got darker, but however, the light became stronger, because we needed Tzaddikim, like the Baal Shem Tov, to bring this light to a more personal level, that he was able to be mechazik, that you know what, even if you don't know how to learn, and you're just a simple farmer, you could do tremendous Yehudim, like me, like the Tzaddik. So, so, so Rabbi Nachman has come around now to mamish give us strength, to tell us that even in our times when mamish the whole world is running around crazy, that you should know you could be able to accomplish tremendous, tremendous chusim for yourself. You could mamish grab the most highest lights of Gan Eden. Remember, it's like the mushal that it says that the Tefer Shlomo of Radomsk said that he said that that. Uh, that there was a, the, the Kaddish Baruch Hu, I mean the king in the Mashal, the king opened his gates. He said, you know what, uh, there's going to be a day I'm just going to open my gates. He set a certain date that whoever wants to come to the palace can walk in and take whatever they want. So then the people that worked in the palace, they said, you know, they got together, they had a meeting. And they said, listen, we can't let this happen. Because if, they, if, people, if everyone comes, they're going to take, they're going to clean out the palace. We're going to be left with nothing. And that's going to be catastrophic. You know, we can't do that. So... 
So they said, we gotta, we got to work out a plan. What they do? They said, we're going to, you know, a few, a few they're going to be coming from certain cities. They knew where they're coming from on the map. And they said, all these different entrances where they come, further away, like miles away, we'll set up tables with nice food and music. And they'll come and they'll partake, you know, and we'll put drink, you know. We'll put some mashka, they'll make some lachayims. And they'll go on. As they go on, a few miles later, we'll put nicer tables with more beautiful food and beautiful, much better drinks, better wines that they've never tasted before with, you know, somebody playing violin on the side. You know, they're on the way into the palace. And what, what they'll do, they'll, because they've never seen such stuff, so they'll eat more and they'll drink more. And so finally they'll come and we'll put even better. And as they come, they'll, they'll be so stuffed up with food and booze that they won't be able to even make it to the palace. We'll just stuff them up with gashmias, with, gash, with, with like really good like drinks and food that they won't have the, the, the strength to even do, you know, come inside the palace. So, so the Redomsker said, he said, he said that um, he connected it to Purim in a certain sense. He says, you should know Purim is the highest day in the world. Don't forget. You know, he, said this to, he said in the Mushal, there's two guys that were there amongst all the food and drink, and while people were drinking, they said, you know what, don't, don't drink, don't eat. Maybe just take a taste if you want, but you know, don't, don't let go, because you got, we're going for the gold, we're going in the palace, we're mamish, going in the, in the inner chambers. That's the story for all of our lives. We come, you know, there's all these like little, like, you know, little treats on the way, you know, and all the mazas, there's all, like, all these things. But if a person really wants like gavadkait, he wants to, that his neshama should bask in the olama elyon, in the eternal pleasure that's going to last forever, then, you know, then you, then you can make away with a little thing here and there, right? Again, Shabbos is main olam haba. Shabbos is the time. But during the weekday is the time we have to know what the mission is, mamish. Shabbos is the time when Olam Haza and Olam Haba come together, right? Which is the Indian of Purim in a certain sense. That's why it says, La'asid Lava, Purim is going to be like the, one of the biggest Yamim Tovim. Because Purim, think about it. Purim, you know, like you take a Yeshiva Bachar the whole year, he's like learning, steiging, you know. You know, he's like, mamish, he's involved in like, you know, in the avoda of Baruch Mordechai, right? Comes Purim, all of a sudden, you know. Get him smashed, you know, like put on a clown outfit, you know, walk around the streets. Like, what the heck is he doing? This is crazy. He's acting like wild, you know? That's the whole Indian. That on Purim, you realize that even mamish when you're like, you know, you're gone. You know, you're just like, Pasha, just, you know, it's just a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Even if you're on the lowest of Madrigas, even if you're mamish like, at the low yada, it's ain od milvada, Kodesh Baruch Hu's right there with you. It's not a joke, you know, you think you f- you've fallen on your reading, you know, the Kutzke Rebbe says, a Yid, when he falls, where does he fall? He falls on the lap of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. You never fall out. There's no such thing as off, like I'm off. You know, guys say, oh, I'm off right now. You know, there's no off. You know, Hashem's right there. You know, he's with you. He's off with you, wherever you are. You know what I'm saying? So we have to realize that, take it deep into our hearts, and that this Purim should hopefully be like Mamish, a transformation, that, that every, like, you know, the Megillah that we hear, is Kabbalah a Torah? It's a new. It's a new Torah for our neshama. The Ben Ishchai says that when we heal, that it's tre- when we hear that it's tremendously healing for the soul, and we have to know that whole days mechias amalek, all the forces of impurity fall away, the clouds go away. It's a chance to see a Kadosh Baruch Hu face to face, right? Mamish face to face. That that to to know and the highest knowledge is that Hashem runs the show. There's no difference. There's no Baruch Mordechai, there's no Arham, there's just HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's all Hashem everywhere, on every level. Mitz Hashem, Hashem should give us the schus to really, to know that and to eternalize it and to see Mashiach Tzitkein of Akar of Mamish. Shkaya, shkaya. No, should we sing it again? No, you play, you play. No, you, you. I'll sing, you drum. <laughs> Can I toss that name on you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Leilu Nishmat. Tina Bat Yitzchak Mordechai Halevi. Tina Bat Yitzchak Mordechai Halevi. As well, Shem. Look, Shem Tanchenu Eganeden. By the way, um, I'm talking to a few friends to see, like on Purim, if anybody wants to get together. We'll see. Who knows where we're going to be? But uh, if we could find a location, we want to we want to ask to see if we get this spot. I'll be Gavaldik. If we can, just push it fly over here. Um, so we'll see. I'll keep you posted if it's happening. Is that the show?
Guitars here, let's say. Uh, Give me shit. <laughs> <laughs> 